Okay guys, so now we're gonna talk about um, what's called fix up strategies. These are different from comprehension strategies. Comprehension strategies focus more on understanding what is being read uh, and different ways to get into the text and different ways to be able to understand the text. Fix up strategies focus more on what happens when the student isn't able to actually read the text. So here's, here's an example. Um, if you've ever had a struggling reader uh, alongside a more confident reader, you'll notice there are some big differences. So both of them will come to words that they don't, whoops, those are my notes. Um, both of them will come to words that they don't know, but your um, confident reader is more likely to try out different strategies to figure out the unknown word. The struggling reader generally freezes because he or she doesn't even know um, the strategies, the fix-up strategies, or isn't sure which one to use. Both kinds of readers also have times when the text just doesn't make sense to them. They're not comprehending it. Now, the confident reader is more likely to go back to the comprehension strategies that they've learned and be able to figure out which one to use to help them understand the text. Once again, the struggling reader may freeze because they aren't sure which comprehension strategy to use. So one of the issues for struggling readers is they think that confident readers or quote, good readers, don't need to use these reading comprehension strategies or fix up strategies. Only bad readers need to use them. Not so. It's just that the good readers, so-called good readers, or the more confident readers, sort of know which ones to pull on, to, to, to pull out and use at given times, or they might try out several different strategies until they get the right one, but they're confident because they can do that. Um, more often than not, the struggling reader will be reluctant to try and use these strategies because they feel that using them labels them as a bad reader or confirms their own feeling that they're a bad reader. Good readers in their mind don't need to use their strateg these strategies because good readers get it right the first time. We know that's not always so. We know that's hardly ever so. Um, so what readers, especially struggling readers, need to see is that proficient readers so-called good readers, confident readers, also use these fix-up strategies. So what are fix-up strategies? Have you ever read a text, a passage of text, and then realized that while you read every word, you can't remember a thing? It happens to me. Maybe you misread a word only to find out that the sentence you just read doesn't make sense. Or perhaps you came across a word that you've never heard of before. Or um, you read a word that in the context didn't make sense. Um, so you want to go back and check and make sure it was the right word. So that's exactly what fix-up strategies are. It's when we go back to figure out what went wrong. What did, we re what did we do wrong? Did we read something wrong? Did we just misunderstand something? Was it the context, um, et cetera? They are strategies that will help you fix your reading of the text, which in turn fixes the comprehension of what you read. So 
here are some fix up strategies. Number one, reread what you just read. Don't keep reading. If you didn't get it, stop, go back, reread what you read. And I'm saying this to you as you would say it to your student. So you're sitting, you're sitting there with your student and your student read and you ask a comprehension question and they didn't understand what they read. Are you gonna let them go on? No. You're gonna suggest, gently of course and lovingly and kindly, that they go back and reread what they read either out loud or maybe silently. Because remember, as we talked about, sometimes people uh, understand better when they read silently than when they read out loud or vice versa. So you're gonna go back and reread what you just read. If you still don't understand, there are a lot more strategies. So here's the next one. Read it out loud. If you were reading it silently before, now try reading it out loud. Um, see if that helps. Read it out loud a couple of times. Read out loud just the word or the phrase that doesn't make sense, and then read the whole sentence. Maybe read the sentence before and the sentence after out loud and see if now you can figure it out. The third fix-up strategy is called using context clues. This is also a comprehension strategy, which we will learn about through our presentations, uh, which begin next class. Um, so using context clues means that we are looking at the words, the phrases, the sentences around the word that we don't know to see if we can figure out what the word means. If it's a picture book, we can also look at the pictures. A lot of times the illustrations will give us clues as to what those words mean. So using all of the context clues that we have available to us. If you still can't figure it out, you might look up a word that you don't know. Believe it or not, classrooms still have dictionaries um, and we still do teach kids how to use them. But they can use a computer if they want to, um, or if you're generous enough and you want to let them use your phone, you can. they can Google it on your phone. Um, not always the best idea, but in a certain, you know, with a whole group, not a great idea, but one-on-one -on -one with a student, it's okay sometimes. You have to figure out when you know when it's all right and when it's when it's better to just use a computer or an iPad. Um, but look up the word uh, to figure out what it means. Now here's here's where we now put that together with context clues, because a lot of times words have different meanings based on their context, and so a dictionary or a thesaurus, um, or an online dictionary, is going to give more than one definition. So now we have to look at the different definitions and try them out based on the context and see which one makes the most sense. Another fix-up strategy is to ask questions. So ask yourself questions like, what did that just say? Or what did that mean? Or what just happened? Or what am I not understanding? Try and pinpointing those, uh, those questions will help then to be able to answer them. Now, the next strategy is to think Think about what you've already read. So everything we read is in context, except isolated lists of words, which isn't really reading. So what, when we're reading in context, we can think about what we already read. We may have already read half the story, or a few pages, 
or we might even be close to the end of the story. If we can think back to what else we've read and how we got to this point in the story, that might then help us figure out the unknown word. Make connections. <laughs> Sound familiar? Um, make connections. Think, think about what you know, what you know about your own experiences, about other things you've read, about the world around you, about media, about music, or any of those other connections. Um, and see if you can connect any of those things to this text in a way that helps it make sense. The next strategy is to slow down. A lot of times, um, kids try and just rush through it, one, to just be done with it, and two, because they think if they read it faster, that means they're reading it better. But we know that sometimes reading too fast means that they're missing out on the comprehension. So slow down, understanding takes time. Um, think the next strategy is to think about the author's purpose. Remember, we talked about pie, uh, that the author's purpose is either to persuade, to inform, or to entertain. If they can think about the author's purpose and what the author is trying to tell them in the story, then they can um, they might be able to figure out the word based on what the author's purpose is. And then finally, pay attention to what you're reading. So a lot of times we tend to just read and we don't really think about what we read before. But making sure that we're paying attention to our thoughts as we read not ignoring those thoughts that we have, those questions that come up in our minds as we're reading, um, but really paying attention to them. And as we come to unknown words, asking those questions, that might help us figure out those unknown words. Okay, so to review, your fix-up strategies are reread what you just read and see if you can understand it the second time around. Read it out loud, or if you read it out loud and didn't understand it, try reading it silently and see if that helps. Number three, using your context clues, which include both text and illustrations. Um, number four, looking up a word you don't know, either using a dictionary, a thesaurus, or an online resource. Number four, asking, number, I'm sorry, number five, asking questions like what did that just say? Or what is the, what's the point? What's happening here? Number six, think about what you've already read. Put it, try and put um, what you're reading now, what you're not getting into the context of what you've already read. Make connections is the next one, seven, make connections as we've we talked about in the mini lesson. Number eight, slow down. Really pay attention to, to each word and how they fit together. Understanding takes time. Number nine, think about the author's purpose. Is the author trying to persuade you of something, to inform you, or to entertain you? And that will give you a good clue as to the meaning of, of the word that you're trying to read. And then finally, pay attention to what you're reading. Don't ignore what you've already read. Make sure you're really thinking about what you're reading and, and thinking about your thoughts as you're reading. Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit about more about this when we come back to class next week. Um, if you are in section 902, have a great time at Project, actually both of you, have a great time at Project Wild. I will see section 902 next week, and I will see section 901 the following week. Bye.